In this video lecture, we're going to take a look at the rules governing expressions involving multiple different data types, or mixed type expressions. OK, let's get started. In the ideal case, all of the variables in some Java expression will be of the same data type, which makes matters very clear and unambiguous. But in a realistic sense, often calculations will need to be made using variables of multiple different data types, or what we call mixed data types. Now we need to be able to address issues of greater and lesser precision variables being used together. Fortunately, there are rules governing this, and generally it's okay as long as any left-hand side variable can accommodate the right-hand side expression. What it really boils down to is, we can assign smaller variables into larger variables, but we cannot assign larger variables into smaller variables. For now, think of this as an example. If we have a five-gallon bucket of stuff, we can safely empty that bucket into a 10-gallon bucket. But the converse is not always true. We can't, in general, safely empty a 10-gallon bucket of stuff into a 5-gallon bucket because we can't be assured of how much stuff is in that 10-gallon bucket. Also, we said previously Java was a strongly typed language and that every variable had to have some explicitly declared data type. So we can't change a variable's data type after it's been declared or initialized because this would give us a compiler error. Mixed type expressions arise whenever we have some operator surrounded by operands of two different data types. It would be nice to avoid this if at all possible, and sometimes we can achieve this by planning out our data types ahead of time. But if we can't avoid this, we need to resolve it using typecasting, of which there are two types, and the difference between them is who performs this typecasting. Implicit typecasting is done automatically by the compiler, and explicit typecasting is specified by the software developer using some desired data type within parentheses, as shown here. Let's first take a look at implicit typecasting, though. In implicit typecasting, for any single operator, the compiler looks left and right at the data types of the two operands. The operand having lower precision is temporarily promoted to the data type of the higher precision operand. The operation is performed and then the next operation, or any final variable assignment, is performed. Again, this promotion is temporary, and there are a formal set of rules governing this, which we'll see in a few moments. Let's make implicit typecasting a bit more concrete by looking at an example. Here are a couple valid and invalid examples of implicit typecasting. In this first example, we are assigning a lower precision variable into a higher precision variable. Here, we are initializing a float variable and then assigning it to a double variable. Even though this is a mixed type expression, float and double, this is just fine because the double it's being assigned to is larger than the float being assigned to it. By contrast, in this second example, we are trying to assign a higher precision variable into a lower precision variable. And here, the implicit casting will fail and give us a loss of precision compiler error, because we can't safely fit a double into a float, even if the value would safely fit into the range of a float. Please take a moment now to pause this video and view the first part of the short code walkthrough video for operatorscasting.java. Open up this file in JGrasp so you can follow along. You'll find this example in the example source code module on Canvas. Come back to this video when you are finished. Here's another example of implicit typecasting. This example code is pretty short, so we'll take a quick look at it here, but you can listen to the fuller narrative in the indicated code walkthrough. The main thing to point out here is that this, line 28, is a mixed type expression. We have a float retail price multiplied by an integer quantity, so the quantity is implicitly promoted to a float, and this entire right-hand side expression evaluates to a float. Then we are assigning the right-hand side float result to the left-hand side sale price double, which is okay because a double is larger than a float. Please take a moment now to pause this video and view the short code walkthrough video for operatorsmixedtypes.java. Open up this file in JGrasp so you can follow along. You'll find this example in the example source code module on Canvas. Come back to this video when you are finished. Here we can see a list of compatible data types for each of the eight fundamental data types 
in Java. The idea here is that we can assign a variable or expression of any of these right side data types to variables of these left side data types. Again, we can assign a smaller data type to a larger data type, but not a larger data type to a smaller data type. For example, an int is four bytes, so we can assign to it a one byte byte, a two byte short, another four byte int, or even a char because that's ultimately represented as a two byte integer value. We can't, however, assign to an int an eight byte long nor either of the floating point data types because those two are stored in a special floating point data format. We can assign to a float any of the integer data types or even a char but not the larger double data type. A double is the largest data type so we can assign to it any of the smaller numeric data types, any integer data type, or a float, or even a char. However, notice that we can only assign a Boolean true or false value to a Boolean data type, and only a char, or a char compatible integer value, to a char. We said earlier that there were some formal rules associated with implicit typecasting, and here they are. When confronted with a mixed type expression, the compiler will apply the first of these rules which fits. Remember, these rules are applied to binary operators with an operand on each side. If either operand is a double, the other operand will be implicitly promoted to a double and the entire expression will evaluate to a double value. Otherwise, if either operand is a float, the other operand will be implicitly promoted to a float and the entire expression will evaluate to a float value. Otherwise, if either operand is a long, the other operand will be implicitly promoted to a long, and the entire expression will evaluate to a long value. Otherwise, if either operand is an int, the other operand will be implicitly promoted to an int, and the entire expression will evaluate to an int value. Otherwise, both operands will be implicitly promoted to an int, and the entire expression will evaluate to an int value. So what this tells us is that all calculations in Java will be performed at a minimum of int, or 4-byte integer, precision. The converse of implicit typecasting is explicit typecasting. Here, the developer will explicitly specify the desired data type of some expression or calculation by preceding it with that data type within parentheses, as shown here. For example, here's how we would turn an integer value into a char variable. The ASCII or Unicode value for the letter capital A is 65. And let's say that we have that value available to us somehow. To turn that numeric character code into a char letter symbol, all we'd need to do would be apply this explicit typecast within parentheses. Here, we're casting an int value into its corresponding char. We frequently see explicit typecasting used in the context of averaging integer values, so let's take a look at some examples of that. Here we see some examples of performing averaging the wrong way and the right way. Let's say that we know the total of some test scores and how many scores there are, and we want to calculate an average with some decimal place accuracy. This first example in red represents the wrong way to go about it. This calculation will give us a result that is pretty close, but not precise enough. Because both of these operands are of integer type, notice that we are doing integer division here, and so we will get a whole numbered result assigned to the average score. So let's suppose we test this and recognize that we need to use casting for a more accurate result. This second example in red represents another wrong way to make use of casting. Remember that parentheses have the highest precedence of all operators. So this expression will first be evaluated, but again it yields the same integer result as before. All we're doing with this cast then is to apply decimal accuracy to what's already a whole number, which is not what we want. The correct way to perform integer averaging is shown in these last examples in green. Here, we cast the first operand only to a double. So now we have a mixed type expression on the right side, a double divided by an int. By the rules of casting we just saw, the int operand is implicitly promoted to a double, and now we are performing double precision division. 
which gives us the decimal accuracy we are after. Note that this can be done by explicitly casting either operand of the expression. To see this example more fully with actual numbers, please take a moment now to pause this video and view the short code walkthrough video for operatorscasting.java. Open up this file in JGraph so you can follow along. You'll find this example in the example source code module on Canvas. And this example ends this video lecture.